So the vice president is campaigning today in the birthplace of the Republican Party. And a familiar face from across the aisle is going to be alongside her. Former Congresswoman and longtime Republican Liz Cheney is going to be joining Kamala Harris on the stage in Ripon, Wisconsin later today. You may recall Cheney, as well as her father, the former Republican vice president, both endorsed Harris last month. CBS News campaign reporter Shauna Mazel joins us from our D.C. bureau with more on this. You really have uh, you're crossing party lines here with Liz Cheney and the daughter of a former vice president saying she supports the Democratic nominee. What specifics will we hear about why that is? That's right, Errol. So we had Liz Cheney and her father, Dick Cheney, this storied Republican political family, come out and say that they will be supporting Vice President Kamala Harris, who was running for president as a Democrat. This happened about a month ago. But at this event in the battleground state of Wisconsin, you're going to see Harris and Cheney together. And you're going to see that formal endorsement happen in person. We're expecting Vice President Kamala Harris to also praise former Congresswoman Liz Cheney for her patriotism. And, and part of that goes back into that story about January 6, her actions, her response uh, following that, which we know has become a bigger part of the campaign right now. But there's actual significance to the location, Ripon, where they're speaking in Wisconsin. And it's and it's and in particular, it matters for dyed in the wool Republicans. Explain that for folks. Ripon is actually the birthplace of the Republican Party, founded in the 1800s when a group of folks got together. This was really about their opposition to slavery, but they decided that they wanted to form a new party. Vice President Kamala Harris is also going to address that, the values of the Republican Party as well, and how the party has essentially changed and become a party of Trump. But we've seen the Harris campaign continue to reach across the aisle and build a broad co coalition of voters, not just Democrats independents and even Republicans. You had Republicans speaking at the Democratic National Convention as well. And so this is just underscoring that effort by the Harris campaign. And even at Tim Walz's rally in Pennsylvania yesterday, he had a former Republican speaking ahead of him. All right, Shauna Mazel, we appreciate the update. Thank you. Thank you. Well, on the Republican side, Donald Trump is making a stop in Michigan today. Yeah, and this is key because it's his first public appearance since the special counsel's brief was unsealed, another breaking story we brought you live. This was yesterday. It's also Trump's 12th visit to the battleground state during this campaign. And just yesterday, his running mate, J.D. Vance, was sign singing his praises in Michigan. CBS News campaign reporter Torin Small is in Washington with more. Torian, 12 times in Michigan. <clears throat> what do we expect to hear from Trump today? Why is the Trump campaign focused so much on Michigan? Why is that essential for them? Yeah, it's a must-win state. It's a state that Trump flipped in 2016. Of course, Joe Biden won it back in 2020, and it's traditionally known as the Democrats' blue wall, but it's a state that Republicans feel is up in play. As in terms of what we expect to hear from the former president today, J.D. Vance's running mate yesterday made the case that Donald Trump has been the strongest for Michigan voters and Michigan uh, residents on the economy, often invoking uh, Michigan's auto industry and the current state of the economy economy and manufacturing in the once booming manufacturing industrial state there. Donald Trump also, though, my comment, like you said, just on this unsealed uh, document, legal issues that he's going through, um, but also make more further comments on the debate. As we know, he's been taking a true social to weigh in on the vice presidential debate, saying that Walls was clearly uh, uh, the loser in that debate in his mind. Your so-called Jack Smith deranged in some of the posts he made yesterday. Let's talk about Trump's wife, former First Lady Melania Trump. She posted a social media message today, clearly a promo for her book that's coming out. But she had this interesting message about reproductive rights. Individual freedom is a fundamental principle that I safeguard. Without a doubt, there is no room for compromise when it comes to this essential right that all women possess from birth, individual freedom. What does my body, my choice really mean? Avoiding the interesting use of shadows there, uh, with Melania Trump saying reproductive freedom, something she guards, it seems to be at odds with her husband's political position. What do you make of this? 
I want to take this and, and put it into perspective and what we've seen from the campaign over the past even couple of days. Donald Trump was previously pressed heavily on whether or not he would veto a national abortion ban, and he remained mum on it, even uh, in contention with what his running mate said up until the vice presidential debate this week when he announced on True Social that he would veto any such ban to come across his desk. This is clearly the Trump campaign looking at the strategy of moving closer to the center on this abortion issue because we know since the overturning of Roe v. Wade, it wasn't a winning issue. It hasn't been a winning issue for Republicans when it comes to other elections. All right, Torian Small, thank you.